Okay, so I think everybody's here, Tom, if you're ready to get the show on the road, although I see you have two boxes. Should I delete one of those for you? Uh, <laughs> delete the first one, I guess. I'm not, my video is not working on my work computer, so. Okay. All right, you can see me. So I'm at the gym. Yeah. <laughs> not on the beach. Not on the beach this time. <laughs> I didn't, I gotta find, I get, I get my Royal Oak, I gotta find my Royal Oak background, that'd be more appropriate. How's everybody doing? Everybody feeling good? Yeah, so far so good. Yeah. All right, let's see. So if we're all here, let's uh, pull up the agenda. Okay. We'll call the meeting to order and we'll have a roll call for the four trustees. Uh, Peter Provenzano? Here. Char Douglas? Here. Alex Spike? Here. And Tom McCannon also here. All right. Uh, do we have anyone that signed in and, um, as a viewer that would like to put, make a comment, Julie? No, this time we it was set up differently. Um, the public needed to either call in between a particular time today or email me directly. And Carol tells me there were no call messages and I received no email messages. Got it, all right. Um, and the other difference about this uh, meeting is that it will be live streamed. So it may be being recorded as we speak. Okay, great. <laughs> All right, then we'll uh, pass public comment and move on to approval of our minutes from our meeting April 8, 2020. I think everyone's had a chance to review the minutes that Julie sent out. Are there any updates to that to those minutes? I have a couple edits, please. Sure. Okay, on number seven, um, halfway into the paragraph it says she spoke with a representative from MMRMA that actually should be IBEX insurance so I B as in boy E X insurance and then maybe maybe a clarification for that last sentence where it says uh, they are appointed by the city commission and no matter what, maybe it should say and does not matter what type of account system, just to be a little bit more clear. Do you see that, Shar? You're on mute. I can see your mouth moving though. <laughs> Hang on a sec. I don't have that file open. I opened everything but that. Okay. So let's just. Uh, was that a, a PDF or a Word document, Julie? It's a PDF. I, I turned it into a PDF for the um, mailing packet. Why don't I see that here? Well, tell me what the change is and I'll just make it. Okay, so in number seven, um, I spoke with a representative from IBEX yeah. Insurance. I got that, what was the other okay. one? And then the second one, in that same sentence, it's, um, it's a suggestion for clarification that says, and in your sentence, it says, and no matter what, I think it might be a little bit more clear if it says, and does not matter what. Okay, yep. and then on number nine, um, Mark Liss will ask the finance department to move current funds. Instead of Lyons Bricker. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay, and that that's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Any other changes, edits, or clarifications to our minutes from our last meeting? All right. If not, um, I will ask for a motion to approve. So moved. 
Is there a second? Second. All right. Um, we'll do a roll call vote for those saying aye. Uh, Shar Douglas? Aye. Alex Spike? Aye. Peter Provenzano? Aye. Tom McCannon? Also aye. All right. And it's uh, approved as uh, amended. Uh, financials are also here for your review. Does anyone have any questions? We typically review these and then uh, keep moving. Um, I did want to check and see, was the new contribution that we received from the uh, developer added to this? It was not. So um, I, in my email with the meeting packet, I mentioned that um, the $16,000 donation from Robertson Brothers has been put in a 701 unrestricted fund, and it's sitting there until we move our uh, 295 over to 701 and then it can be combined. Um, also in my email I said that I would try to remedy this um, and get everything on one report before the meeting but I wasn't able to do that. So the report that is out um, to you is just the 295 account which um, for some reason also doesn't have the latest interest payment you know each month we get about twenty dollars or so so you'll see that this total is the same as last month that is another item i was not able to confirm um, uh, about what what's happening and it's possible that i mean if are they um are they working remotely um the finance team or yeah i think yeah pete i think a number of them are and then i also know that tonight is the first budget meeting to the commission okay. so it could be that they're stretched just, thin anyway and then you know they have this big project coming up sure no, that's understandable but I, I did talk to the treasurer uh, when the check came in and she said that she would be putting it in the 701 just to you know, start the movement of our funds into a 701. That's good news. Mm -hmm. So approximately we have um, $30,563 and some <laughs> interest change. Okay, great. Any other clarifications or um updates that we'd want to make sure the committee is clear on or anything that uh, committee members have as as questions. All right, uh, we'll move forward. The uh, financials will be submitted and uh, we'll move to the next agenda item approving today's agenda. Have everyone to take a look. Are there any updates to today's agenda? And if not, I'll ask for a motion to approve. Uh, Mr. Chair, can you see me? Uh, um, I, I can't see you. Like my computer's a little wonky today. <laughs> okay. Um, I just I, I I can't remember if I just sent this to Julie if I sent it to the whole board, but um, I'd like to make sure we set aside enough time to talk about item number fourteen. Um, I'm I'm interested in in moving that up in our organizational timetable. Mm -hmm. Number 14, which is discuss the kickoff event with Robertson Brothers donation. Right. So I'll move approval of the agenda um, with that ask. Okay. Sounds good. Um, is there a second? I'll second that. All righty. We'll have a roll call vote for approval of today's agenda, starting with Charlene du Charlene Douglas. Aye. Alex Spike. Aye. Peter Provenzano. Aye. Tom McCannon also voting aye. All right, our agenda has been adopted. We'll move next into the director's report. Julie? Okay, uh, well, I sent a copy of the director's report to all of you, so I won't go through every item, but um, I will give a woohoo for Robertson Brothers because they sent the check. And um, like I mentioned in the financial report that it has been deposited. It is $16,000 even for unrestricted funds to the Royal Oak Civic Foundation. And um, so that it has been made available to us. And then just as a side note, um, there should be about $4,000 more coming once the final houses sell in the development. Okay. And um, 
uh, third note is that Robertson brothers are very interested in the kickoff event. They would like to participate and help in any way they can. So they're excited for us. And um, once we start thinking about what our plans will be, we certainly can be in touch with their representative. Okay, great. And, and one of them actually lives in Royal Oak also. So he's a, a resident also. Um, and then I guess the second thing would be, we had our first uh, side event. We were kind of the sponsor with our 501c3 uh, documentation for the Royal Oak Firefighters Local Union 431 food um, giveaway event a couple Wednesdays ago at the um, Royal Oak High School. Um, it sounded like they gave away 4,000 pounds of food stuff which is really great. And because they had our 501c3 um, letter, they were able to get about 80 to 90% more food to give away than they would have been able to do otherwise. That's great. I'm glad that the committee all connected offline to uh, discuss in, uh, and uh, prove remotely this connection to, uh, to uh, our new 501c3 status. Did they mention if there were any other future events that they wanted to come back to support Royal Oak residents with food, uh, considering recently reported food shortages? Not that I've heard of. Okay. Well, we'll be on point to help if they decide that they would like to do it again, so. Okay, all right, sounds great. All right, anything else, Julie, that you'd like to report? Um, I'm glad we have a mailbox in the hallway, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, so, um, no, I, I think not. Some of the other things that I worked on um, are minor issues and then the insurance, we're still waiting for new quotes for the, the uh, fidelity part of our insurance. Um, and certainly when that comes through, um, that will be on the next available meeting for us to okay. discuss. Sounds good. Julie, thank you for filing this report and presenting it to the committee. Mm, thank you. Uh, there are no other questions for Julie. We'll move into topic eight, uh, Markless, and the status of the 701 account for the Royal Oak Civic Foundation. Yeah. Hi. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's about two, three weeks ago after the meeting, I notified uh, the uh, finance director to uh, that the tenor of the board was, or the approval of the board was to uh, maintain the status of a 701 account. Uh, sent her the email, uh, was, spoke with Dave uh, Gillum, uh, the interim city manager, and he asked me not to bug Julie uh, during the interim of the uh, budget process. So I will follow through with it, but uh, once the budget process is near completion. But right now, my understanding is that the 701 account has been established. Okay. All right, any questions of Mark? All right, well, we will continue moving on our agenda. Mark, thank you for that update as well. Sure. Uh, moving on to our agenda for unfinished business, reviewing the OCC students uh, branding edits and next steps, Julie. Okay, I will call that up for your um, viewing pleasure here. Let's see if I know how to do this. Um, okay, I think I don't know how to do this. Alex. <laughs> What's up? How do I share a, um, a web page from my browser? Do you know that? Um, when you click share screen, it should give you a couple options of which item to share. Okay. Um, so then just click the, the browser. Okay. So I'm going to share my browser. And I think you have to have that browser open already. Yep. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Okay. Can everybody see that? Yep. Yeah. All right. Excellent. So this is the updated... Um, logo of the version you all voted on at our last meeting. So 
So uh, the, this was the one that we just asked for it in different colors, is that correct? That's right. So I think it used to be the aqua color and then Civic was a darker blue and, and they asked us to use um, the Royal Oak Orange and see what that looked like. I like it. Yeah, you too. It's, it's kind of happy and um, it's catchy. You can, it, to me, it's easily readable. I think you'd recognize those colors. It ties to Royal Oak, but yet we're, it, but yet it's unique. Mm -hmm. And then let me show you one other logo that the same uh, student put out. But I think while he was adjusting this one, he thought of um, another option and that's this one. So he just moved oak under royal, so everything is left lush. Yeah, except it, it changed a little bit. It's less decorative, I think, if you look at, see the R? Oh, yeah. And, and royal's O is smaller than oak's O to give a, a, a more identified break between this word and this word. Right. Oops, here, let me go back and then. Just like being at the eye doctor, like better or worse <laughs> <laughs> one two yeah no actually, actually i like the original one i like the way oak nestles under royal i think that's a great solution nestle right is a great word i love that yes <laughs> that's exactly I, li I like the first one i do too it's almost like we have a snowman in the middle of our uh, our logo <laughs> mm -hmm. oh yeah so maybe during christmas time you could decorate them yeah we could put a little hat there <laughs> so, okay, well, um, do any of you want additional changes or are you ready to say that this is our Royal Oak Civic Foundation brand at this point? I have a quick question. Does the okay. purple have to remain? No. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say without the purple, I think it's perfect. Um, do you have a suggestion of what that should be, if anything? I was thinking nothing. But I recognize that we have the, the name letterhead stuff on the far left. So that's why there's that contrast. Shar, do you have a thought? Well, I, I'm with you in not liking the purple and the curvy thing makes it, um, uh, I mean, creates issues when you're creating Word documents. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure how, the, how we would solve that. Although if you look at the business card, the logo is just floating on a white background and that doesn't seem to be an issue. Mm -hmm. I see it as, as that purple is just, you know, kind of goes to show you, you've got some flexibility. It's like, those are the colors. So maybe, you know, if you had letterhead, you could have the letterhead have the purple on, but in a normal document, you know, you wouldn't need that. What's the other official PMS color that's part of the Royal Oak logo? It's orange and what is the, what's the companion to it? It's gray. Oh. I wonder if we would consider having um, a gray banner that didn't zip out like that, but helped keep it reversed out for letterhead. I, I do like the reversed out element of it on the letterhead, but agree that the, the flare out will cause some issues. So if we just had a gray left flush banner that went down so that our, our logo was reversed out, I'd be curious to see that. So I have a feeling that, that their assignment, students are scattered to the five winds and, and our, our uh, assignment to them did not include final layouts of all documents. Pete, am I correct in that? Not sure. Um, um, how, what do you mean final layout? Yeah. Uh, 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 document templates that you can actually use or send oh, to- Oh, I see. So they would send me they would send me a template of this letterhead to become right. our, our letterhead. I gotcha. Right. Um, and then there's, there's final layout of everything of a business card, the names, the phone numbers, and so forth. I mean, that finalizing artwork um, so that it is printer ready um, is labor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, um, I don't know the answer to that, but certainly I can be in touch with Peter Shade um, because he's been a super 
open to the changes and talking with the students and you know helping us think about how we might give them some kudos so i'm sure he's he would be happy to help us move to the next step i do remember one of my questions to him was because of covid and the the students not being at school is there any way to have edits done and he said oh yeah for sure and if the students can't do it i can do it on my end and get it to you so i i think we're all set and another question to ask is typeface is is about typefaces. Um, that is, are these typefaces um, commonly available? Are they free? Do we have to pay for the font package? Um, is the font package web friendly? Other those are other questions to ask. Okay. Good question. And I believe, I, I, for whatever reason, I thought those like that purple, the those colors on there, I thought those were like the, the official Royal Oak approved colors. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I seem to remember that they were using those, but I don't know, Julie mentioned that once or? Yeah, so we have two sets of uh, colors available. There are the primary three, which is the orange and a dark gray and then one other, and then this aqua color, I think is one of the second level four or five colors available to us. But I'm not, I'm not sure if purple is one of them, but okay. it may be. Right. I like it, I think it looks, I think it's cool. Okay, so um, before we make a final uh, decision on this, we need to know about the typefaces and whether or not these are uh, web friendly. Yes. Okay. And, and who's going to do the actual final layout of templates or um, printer ready files? I mean, yeah, this, this is way out of my wheelhouse, but they might, you know, obviously Shar has an expertise in this. You know, those are great questions, but we could also ask Peter the question of, you know, what's next? What do we need to use this? You know, and so whatever that is, um, we need to know, we need, you know, we don't know, we don't know necessarily. So um, I think those are great questions to ask, but I think another question is what do we need to use this logo in um, on letterhead, business cards, all of that. So if there's something we're forgetting to ask, it gives him an opportunity to speak up and, and let us know um, what okay. it is that we would need in order to, to use this. Okay, well, sounds good. And that, that so what do we need? We mean, we need to tell, we, I mean, we know we want letterhead and, and that's going to be, I mean, I don't know that we're ever, are we ever going to print letterhead or will all of our documents be digital? So there, there's that question we need to decide on. I mean, Julie, most assuredly we'll need business cards. Um, are there any other uh, common things that we want right away? I mean, eventually we're going to want a website and that's a whole nother kettle of fish. Mm -hmm. Well, having this logo as a standalone image that will be needed, you know, for signature lines in our email. Um, if, the, you know, we, we sponsor the local 431 again, they may have a document that goes out and they could pop our logo on as a co-sponsor. So I, that's one of the things that comes to mind to me is, um, Standalone, sta standalone logos. Julie? Yeah. I uh, have the uh, logo colors for the city of Royal Oak. I'm going to try to share them. Okay, great. Uh, except host disabled participant screen sharing. Okay, let me see if I can fix that for okay. you. Um, how do I get to... I actually have the uh, guidebook I could send to everybody. Allow I think you, you may have, did you send us that already? I think I've seen that. I think you yeah. did. Uh, you know what, Mark? I don't see how I can allow you to share. Okay. Not a problem. I will send out the guidebook to everybody you'll see there's uh two sets of colors uh let me just can you, 
Yeah, right. can you just um, maybe read out what the top three colors are just in general? It's orange, right? Orange, gray, and some kind of steel blue. The secondary color pa palette is a darker shade of gray. Uh, then you have tan. Then you have a, a light green, uh, a light blue, and a light purple. Now, it looks like the purple that they're using in the... Uh, in the mock-up, in the logo. Okay. That was very descriptive there, Mark. That was pretty good. You know, I didn't want to get into crimson or... You know. <laughs> <laughs> so just a final question then on the coloration. We uh, we selected this logo based on um, what its, its use would be for web, um, how it was tight. Um, it's kind of square features. And then the original version was um, was two blues that had kind of a Palm Beach feel um, between the aqua and um, that it was in there. Are we, do we need to be closer, but not on top of the, um, the uh, Royal Oak graphic standard by changing the aqua to a steel blues so that we're, we're a little more aligned with Royal Oak's graphic standard? Um, you know, my thought is that these colors seem to go very well together and were tied slightly to the branding of the city of Royal Oak, but there's a little bit of um, distance also. So it's like a hybrid, kind of like the organization. Yeah, I like it. It's it, we haven't mirrored them exactly, but we've got that flavor. Any other thoughts? Everyone okay with it as 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 is? I, I'm okay with it as is. Do we need any do we need official vote on this at all? Do we think that's? Uh, I move approval of the logo as submitted. For your colors. Oh, yeah, look at that. Those are the secondary. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh. It is kind of like that purpley color. It is. And then kind of like the aqua, also the second one in line. Yeah. Uh, if you're looking, I'll, yeah, okay. I'm sorry, Pete. So do you, do you want these questions answered ahead of time? Or do you think we can just make it work? Oh, you mean in terms of uh, fonts and all? No, I'm yeah. just I'm just moving to approve the logo. Oh, okay. Is there a second? Alex seconded. Okay, great. Any other discussion on it before we close um, close the discussion and officially approve it? All right. Uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Those in favor of adopting this as our inaugural logo. Um, we'll go through roll call starting with Shar. Aye. Alex? Aye. Peter? Yes. And me? Yes. Okay. Woohoo! <laughs> Look how far we've come. Yay! Yeah! Peter, thank you for making this resource available to us as well. Oh, you're very welcome. I'm so glad it worked out. And then one other question we may need to add into that is when do we need this all official and um, back chart to your earlier point about if we're going to be doing an event around uh, an announcement that we get all this organized so that we are presented graphically for any public event that we'll be doing. All right, um, unfinished business nine, we've checked off. Uh, number 10, discuss recruiting additional trustees. Quick conversation. So I think we uh, we all were going to come to this meeting with a few ideas of um, additional names we wanted to add or a process for adding new folks. Are there any thoughts on that from our last discussion? Well, typically, no. oh, go ahead, Shar. No, you go ahead, Alex. Well, I was going to say typically, um, you know, as you're having meetings and running into people in the community and you know seeing people down the street. It's a great way to say, hey, that might person might be a great for for board service. But since we're all sequestered at home, 
Um, <laughs> perhaps that doesn't happen as often as it, it once did. Um, so that's what I was just going to suggest. So maybe we need to, um, I, I know we have a list here, so it would probably behoove us uh, to think through some of the individuals on the list um, and or just identify some gaps that we think would be helpful um, if we want to have a robust conversation about it. And I also recognize that we want to make sure we save time um, for item 14. So I do agree that's it. Well, the items leading up to 14 as well. So um, Cheryl, I'll pass it back to you. Yeah, Julie, um, we were going to talk about how to make this available so that all of us can edit it. Um, mm -hmm. And did you further investigate that? Did you have further thoughts? Um, I didn't, other than I'm, I'm a little reluctant to have things stored in Dropbox and have, you know, most of our pieces there and then some pieces of our um, work in Google Drive. So having it two places, I think over the course of time could get a little bit hairy. Um, and so I was hoping that we could figure out how to make it work in Dropbox. But then um, in my conversation with Alex about Zoom and some other things, it appears that there are multiple um, software uh, programs available that help keep everything in one spot for board work. And so those could use a little bit more research, I think. But as of right now, um, I think if we want to continue working on this uh, trustee spreadsheet, if we have to put it into Google, then I, I will be fine with that. But I would like to not, like I said, be in a habit of trying to hold things in two different places. I mean, I could make a, 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 I think a, I could contribute a lot if I had the document that I could work in. Or if yours, if this is a, a spreadsheet, you know, send the spreadsheet, how can we do that? I mean, at least I could create a spreadsheet using the exact same columns you have and then email it to you and you could cut and paste it. Yeah, so, so you, when I share this through Dropbox, I would share it with editing uh, permissions for you all. And that would allow you to change it in real time, the document that we all would be, we would all have access to. The only issue is, and, and you mentioned this the last time, if um, Alex wants to work on it at the same time you work on it, there can be a disconnect about who saved first. Why don't you, can you um, give us each our own tab? And then the only thing, I mean, I could look at other people's tabs and see who they've identified and then add my own names in my own tab and I'd be the only person changing that data. Or we could just have a rule that you add underneath. Does that make sense? Yeah, both Pardon of those me? solutions might not work. Um, if, I haven't used Dropbox uh, extensively for a, for a minute, but um, if if say Shar and I were both in it and then saved it, it might create uh, additional copies, which uh, could actually resolve the issue. So actually, I mean, I would take what you were suggesting, Shar, a step further. And Julie, if you wanted to save like this, but dash Alex, dash Shar, dash Pete, like that kind of thing, I mean, they each have our save our own copies. Um, and then maybe just add on to the, the bottom or, or you know, colorize what changes we've made. That way, Julie, you don't have to go back in and reconcile. Um, you know, I'm thinking about ways in which we can track our changes since uh, Sheets doesn't really do that well. Yeah, so Char, I think the, the easy uh, quick answer is it still needs a little bit of research to find the best way to move forward. But to get you all started, if you want to just let me know what would work best, we can certainly do that. And if it is Google Drive right now, that's that's fine. A Google spreadsheet, I can save that and um, share the link with all of you today after the meeting. Well, yeah, even if we all pinky swear to, to dive into it this month <laughs> um, and uh, in, our, in our spare, quarantine um, um, and then you could pull it back into Dropbox. I mean, once, right. once we had done a, a brain dump into it. 
Yep. Okay, does related that sound to, good to everybody? Yeah, that sounds okay. great. Related to this conversation, we when we were identifying potential community leaders to be part of our, our efforts going forward, we wanted to think through what were our next operational or promotional needs for um, and who best would could help us with that as well too. So um, we kind of stopped the conversation there if I remember correctly. Do we wanna have a, a quick conversation about what do we need next? Are we next about promotion? Are we next about connecting to the corporate community, uh, the donor community that we would want to at least start to, to think through who the next two to three could be based on what they could, could bring to the table? Or does that require a longer conversation? I don't know that we're, we've got enough of a work plan together yet to show to prospects. I don't know that we don't, we, we don't know what we're telling, asking them to do. agree on that. I think we need a, to flesh out more of a, of a strategic direction to, to, to sell, to, to, have a, to have a story to tell. Okay. We're close. All right. So why don't we keep this um, still kind of hanging out in unfinished business then? And we'll continue to have the discussion based on once we get our operation a little bit more developed and then who we need to connect to it at that point. Yes. Okay. Any other points on uh, unfinished business that we want to discuss today? Or do we just want to leave it here on the agenda? We don't need a, a motion to keep it there, do we? No, you don't need a motion to keep it on the, uh, on the agenda. We'll just continue to unfinish our unfinished business. <laughs> okay. All right. Any, any other open topics on, on item 10 then? Okay, we'll move forward to uh, the new business agenda and uh, item 11, discuss parameters of day-to-day -day operations. Julie, is this you? Yeah, it, um, I, I wanted to get the conversation started about day-to-day -day operations. And this came up when we were asked uh, by the local 431 to send um, a 501c3 letter telling Gleaners that we, we would be their partner. And um, I wonder if there is, you know, a general list of day-to-day -day operations permissions that the trustees can give to me um, so that for some of these smaller items that don't have, you know, a, a financial repercussions that we can move forward more quickly. It, it turned out that uh, I could send the email to the four of you and you were able to respond in time for us to send the letter, which I think we only had a day and a half because the, the need for the 501c3 letter was a surprise to the local 431. They learned about it the day that they were signing the contract. And so, you know, just thinking about how to um, make some of these situations a little bit more smooth in the future. And then also um, uh, perhaps some conversation about expenses that are below a certain amount that uh, the executive director would have permission to spend if necessary. Any thoughts on this? Um on these ideas or other elements we should add in or when to activate? Sure, are you gonna say something or? No. Oh, okay. So I, I think Julie's right. We, this is a bigger conversation though. Um, we should give her, I, 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 I'm not sure whether I'm thinking it's like a job description or, or something that gives her authorization to make decisions at certain levels. I mean, maybe it's a policy that we have to write um, to give her authorization um, to do things, to do certain things on behalf of the, of the foundation and it, it give her authorization to spend money or not. I mean, some guidance is a good idea. 
but I, I think it's it's really more a set of policies that probably have to be written and be thought through. Yeah, I think it's, um, or Shara, did you want to go? No. Nope. Okay, I was gonna say, I think it's, um, it's probably a, a little bit of an all the all of the above because um, we have the thinking about some of the different financial controls policies that we should have which have been articulated with the city acting as um fiduciary is not the right word but uh, managing part, party from that perspective and then there are other things that we should probably consider as well around like gift acceptance policy which would help um, or something like a gift acceptance policy, which might help answer a couple of the questions that I think Julie's raising up, um, or just operational policies or something like that too. That would, that's part of my thought. Like I think like an internal financial controls policy around, for lack of a better phrase, check signing um, would be appropriate. Um, or these could be included in uh, like a job description or something like a board approved job description or protocol or something like that, that uh, grant specific authority to, to Julie. My thought was like minor expenses she should have the authority to do um, and probably, you know, with a dollar cap per instance and a dollar cap per fiscal year. Um, that just seems to make sense. That way we don't have to struggle to answer to every individual thing. I don't know if that makes sense. And I agree, it's probably a broader conversation, but just a couple of things that I was, that came to mind while when do we think we need to activate this? Um, once folks become aware of our existence and um, thinking through a lot of community needs right now, you know, will we start to get tapped for, for these types of concepts so we need to be prepared sooner than later? I think we should do it soon. <laughs> um, and, and I wonder if it's something that Mark or, or somebody might be able to help us with. I don't know if there's any other organizations in Royal Oak um, that have a similar set of policies, you know, that are attached to Royal Oak that we could use as a template. Um, you know, it'd be nice to not recreate the wheel. Um, Cause I, I'm sure there are a lot of, there's a lot of these types of policies floating around out there in the world. Um, it's just a better getting our hands on them and maybe customizing them to keep it simple. Here, let me Google that for you. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, one thing I'll mention is um, back in March, the Kitsch uh, firm sent over to me a number of policies. Uh, we asked for the gift acceptance policy that um, Mr. Vecchioni mentioned when he was visiting with us, and they ended up sending six or seven different policies. I'm in the process of reading through those right now, um, but one of them is the gift acceptance policy. And I, I with my first go through, um, it appeared to have a lot of information uh, about in-kind donations, cash donations, real estate donations. It was, uh, I think an eight page document. So, so some of these are um, pretty in depth. Um, and I wonder, Alex, are you willing and available to maybe look at a couple of these with your knowledge of governance in uh, yeah. the United Way and, and see if they look reasonable? Yeah, that makes sense because I think that helps uh, alleviate or increase operational efficiency. I'll say. Yeah. So, do you think you would have time in the next month? Yeah, you can send them my way. Okay. One thing I'm aware of uh, with the city is that uh, can you hear? Is can everybody hear me? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is that uh, the city commission has a uh, actually it's under the charter when the city commission adopts its budget, it also adopts a dollar amount where the department heads can authorize expenditures. Uh, that's right in our, that was amended a number of years ago, but it's right in our charter. Because the limit used to be $500 and it made uh, purchasing somewhat difficult for the department. $500? <laughs> yeah. That was, well, from 1940 something. Or 
So Julie, I wonder if parts of your new role with us will be similar to what I do for Beaumont. And I'm wondering if I sent you um, into the group, my job description here, um, if we can use that as a template. Is there elements about um, directing communications, uh, solicitations, um, and we can make it more operational to add some of those elements into it as well. So at least you've got a template. Would that be helpful to, to kind of spur this along? I think it would be. Thank you. So one of the expenses I know that's going to come up shortly is um, the remittance envelopes we talked about during the meeting when um, the treasurer was with us, where we could have a colored envelope and um, donators can drop their checks right inside if they're not interested in or don't have abilities to use the PayPal web online service. Um, and I did a little bit of research into remittance envelopes and it looks like the the quotes are coming in between $75 and $100 for 250 envelopes. And I was thinking of buying a smaller amount because in two months we'll have a different address. So, I mean, that's just one thing that comes to mind. About how, many how, months, to, how many months will you have a different, different address? In about two months, we'll be moving into the city hall. I, I would be tempted. I mean, can we wait until you have the new address and not even... I don't know how much activity you're going to have between now and you know in the next two months with this pandemic. I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah, yeah, unless we do the kickoff and we you know start talking about the Robertson donation and and asking for philanthropy based on you know this this piece right now, you know our kickoff or 501c3 the um, Robertson brother money and then our new branding because it sounds like perhaps we would want to do that sooner rather than later. But if we don't do it now, then certainly I won't, I won't need the envelopes until we move to the new building. So just sort of, you know, get playing out the scenario here, if you printed only with the future city hall address and somebody got a hold with one of them and mailed it to that address before the building is open, don't you think the post office would figure it out? No. <laughs> okay. Especially not at this point. I think they're so stretched. Um, letters dropped in the Royal Oak box, in some cases goes all the way to Lansing to get sorted and then sent back down to Royal Oak to go to, you know, my neighbor in South Royal Oak. So, yeah, I just, I think they have their own issues right now. <laughs> There's also the idea of buying the envelopes with the new address and having a few labels and using the labels on top of, you know, the printed address until we move into the new building. So I think there's something we can do about that. I guess I'm, I was more uh, bringing this particular item up as one of the potential expenses in the near future, you know, a smaller expense for a day-to-day a -day operations kind of, um, asset of ours. Okay, so our next steps on this will be to start to craft a job description um, offline and then bring it to the next meeting um, to, to move it into a more formalized vote as to what we'll have you do. Okay, and, and who will do this crafting of the job description? I'm going to send you um, mine as a start and then I'm glad to work with you offline um, to to um, help create it. Okay, great, thank you. And okay. um, I can send you a couple examples as well, that if it's helpful, I don't wanna over reference, um, but that, that could be helpful from a couple organizations that I know have good samples. And then great. the other thing I was gonna lift up too is um, we should probably move uh, on gift acceptance policies and the phrase I was looking for before was a, like a third party third party fundraiser kind of agreement. It would be a little different. Typically, that's like uh, an agreement that you know if you wanted to host a specific fundraiser or party that for um, 
nonprofit XYZ or something like that. Like it would be their stipulation. Obviously with this, it would be more of using their fundraising for us to give to them. So obviously there would be a little bit of a, an additional uh, caveat there, but I don't know if that would also behoove us not to add more work um, if for the, before the next meeting, but I feel like these are have, all things that have to happen before we launch. Might be have a, um, a policy that will will move that forward pretty quickly. I've got a, a pretty uh, comprehensive document um, that I've created for um, for Beaumont about what we will and won't do. It helps groups organize their um, their fundraising to know uh, from a timeline perspective and a budget perspective if they should move forward. Most third party events that we get approached with, um, once they do the math, they lose money. So uh, mm -hmm. it, it was a labor of love that I did more than a decade ago. And it, it helps us uh, move forward projects that, that have good potential and to help educate people who have great ideas, but they might be, um, they might not be such great event ideas. Okay, wonderful. So the, I've got a list here of um, things that the these this document or these documents include, and I've got a job description, financial controls policy, gift acceptance policy, third party fundraising agreements, executive director spending limits. Uh, any other subjects we want to make sure get covered? Okay. Yes, I mean, obviously, if anybody thinks of anything, you know, you can call Tom and, or email Tom and tell him, but those are the, the highlights that I've captured. Sounds good. Okay. Um, I don't know if we need any, I don't know that we need any official motion on this as it's all work to bring it back um, and then have some votes on it. Is there, uh, is, our plan would be to do this all offline in the next 30 days to be able to bring it back to the next meeting, correct? If you can do that, that'd be great, Tom. Okay. We'll make that our, our, our plan so that we're keeping this moving forward. Anything else on topic 11? Then let's move forward to topic 12, develop mission and vision statements. And there's an attachment we can refer to. Okay, and I can share the screen for that one also. Okay, so this was just a list of um, other community and city foundations uh, mission statements that I found, um, I guess about a year ago, uh, just to get people's uh, minds thinking about um, some options. Yeah, I recall when I looked at these that these were for um, community foundations whose missions are really different from ours. I do like the Scranton Area Community Foundation one. Oh, that's the fourth one down. Two, three, four. Yeah, to enhance the quality of life for and all people of your Royal Oak through the development of organized philanthropy. <clears throat> I might add some extra words like and community engagement or something like that. Yeah, but I don't know that that's our job is developing organized philanthropy. Isn't that aren't we aren't we creating are we organizing the city's program needs and trying to find matches with them in the philanthropic corporate community? Right, but I think when they say development of organized philanthropy, that's more like getting other people to be philanthropic, not necessarily. Uh, I mean, I'd like to be more specific than that. 
So, Julie, the, um, the piece towards the bottom of this document that talks about the Royal Oak Civic Foundation provides rewarding ways for donors to support a thriving. So all of that with the core values, where did all of that come from? Um, the core values, I used um, a couple documents and then one of uh, Royal Oaks documents and just popped some of the things in that we have as core values. Um, this one, the Royal Oaks Civic Foundation provides rewarding ways that probably was um, some other place, except not with, you know, not necessarily tied to a particular community foundation. It may have been pieced together. What but again, yeah, what does I, everybody I, think what you've got there? That's um, interesting. This one here? Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, I, I like it. I also um, think that in some ways having a, a broader mission allows us to allows us some flexibility in the future. Um, keep in mind that when I put these together, I was under the impression that the Royal Oak Civic Foundation was going to support the city entities and also community um, activities or events that we didn't know about yet. So it was before the commission um, dialed in a little bit more detail just on the city entities. So this this one for Scranton, I think, you know, it, my, my gut feeling is that it's okay to be a little bit more broad. Refresh my memory, um, the city I thought gave us some guidance about, um, you know, that, that our priority would be kind of the city function, city proper, you know, the functions, but mm -hmm. I didn't know that it limited our scope to that. Um, yeah, um, I can't get to my documents very quickly because I'm using two screens at home and that's not available through the remote um, computer. So I've had to move everything onto a different computer. And I wonder, Shar, can you pull up that document from the uh, commission? You know, the one where they, at the strategic meeting, made a call about what we, what they think we should be doing? Probably. Okay. Um, or anybody I... else. Um, it would have been one of the documents that I sent through for an earlier meeting probably February's because I think you met in January. And I'm looking for it. Okay, thank you. All right, so what am I looking for here? What would that document have been called? Ah, here it is. Is that right? No. Was it the visioning document that came out of the city meetings? The planning? The yes. Planning yeah, I think, I think that's it, yeah. Yes. All right, let's... Arg. Civic Foundation. Do I look by date or by name? That is the question. What's by date? So the, we met in February. February. So it would be after that city commission planning results. No, you guys met in January. I think January 24th. So it would have been part of my February packet to you. All right. How do I share? I've got, I've got it. Okay. I don't know if you can share. I wasn't able to share, uh, allow Mark to share. So I'm not oh. sure. Um, Maybe you could just read it to us because I think it wasn't that long, right? All right? Hold on. Yep, I can do that. Okay. So <clears throat> the foundation should raise funds for municipal departments, programs, and facilities. Seek funds that pro for programs that aren't can't or can't be sufficiently and appropriately funded through taxes. 
focus on the library, animal shelter, public art, and parks and recreation. While funds may go to non-municipal organizations, for example, the Nature Society, they should go through and meet needs articulated by city departments, boards, committees, commissions, and task forces. Prioritize recurring donations and planned giving in addition to the director's assigned role as the city's grant writer and energy and sustainability manager and prioritize grantees who match our donations. And there were some pri indicators of success, but I think what I just said addresses our immediate issue. Is that helpful, Pete? Um, one of the things I was thinking about is what if that's the, like if we were to lay this out on a page, you know, vision is, vision is different than mission, which is different than like goals. Um, and if I was to lay this out on like a web page, like be about a section, we could have a mission and or a vision and then put beneath that, like our charge is, and then the stuff that shard, you know, our charge from the city commission is, you know, and then all that stuff or something like that too. <laughs> But I was thinking from like a communications perspective, if we're putting on like a letterhead or something like that, wouldn't we want something really short? So Julie, did you send out my document, my uh, thoughts on mission and values? I did. I will uh, share that one right now. And is there anything there that anybody looks at and goes, you know, thinks that might have use? The less than the burden of government, is there a reason that's, um, I'm forgetting, is that hyperlinked or something? Uh, it is um, because, and it's hyperlinked only to, what is it, um, a website that talks about charitable purposes. I mean, our, our 501c3 status, a lot of nonprofits, you know, say that part of their role is to lessen the burden of government. And, and this is like arts organizations that say that. But if ever there was an organization that was created to lessen the burden of government, you know, we're it. Do you think that's worthy of being in our mission statement? Um, not necessarily. I mean, it's the, there are other things there that I think are just, and may not be part of a mission statement, but are useful thought starters. I think we have to be careful because as I read this, we don't want it to look like we're we're supplanting or we're 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 raising money um, to cover the expenses that the city doesn't want to pay for. Um, and it, 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 we just have to be careful that the mission doesn't elude or give any hint of that, I think. Well, and, and you're right, because we do want um, to broadly serve the community. We may start with these activities since that's kind of our, our roots, so to speak. Um, yeah. But no, you're right, our, our, it extends beyond that. So if you go back to what Julie had put down for Royal Oak, um, does that kind of that mission that she penned there, um, does that fit? Is it this one that you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. I think it does. And our priority might be, especially right now, um, you know, essentially supporting the departments of the city, but it doesn't always have to be that way. 
and even if it even if that is our priority that would fit that mission yeah you know pete at um a few meetings ago you said something that was really interesting and i i like it i think for our narrative and that was helping our entities be best in class so using that kind of language instead of you know uh, reducing the burden is um a little um what's the word not so much romantic but it, it's not i mean it's it sort of feels like it's something that the community could get around what i yeah what i don't want it to look like is okay so great so you don't you don't charge me enough taxes to cover these services so now you're going to ask me to donate to it instead um you really want to be careful that we don't have that image um so best in class that works or yeah and thriving community right yeah that it's it, i think it has to be a grander purpose than paying for the items that the city doesn't want to pay for yeah. so i was thinking about i agree with Charlotte. that's like the correct definition to lessen the burden um because ultimately that's why nonprofits exist um, but I'm concerned that the there won't be the connection around that definition to a little bit to what you're talking about, Pete. So I like the, what you wrote, uh, Julian. I feel like it does get to what you um, you put together, Shar. Do we need to narrow it down um, where it goes? It says uh, resilient community where needs are addressed. Do we need to, to encapsulate that for any reason though? So that people aren't thinking that we were a do it all? Like everyone has a different idea of what a community need is. So, you know, are, are we focusing only on X? That's a good question. So everybody in this room has has at some point in their lives worked on mission statement development, right? Um, this doesn't seem like how we've gone about it. I mean, I, I mean, I, I mean, in my world, in my mind, you know, there's a a more structured way to assemble our ideas into an ultimately agreed upon document, or not document statement. I mean, for example, this mentions the Royal Oak Civic Foundation, but doesn't mention beneficiaries. I mean, should we be saying, uh, confirming that the beneficiaries are residents of Royal Oak? You know, who, who's our audience here? I mean, there's just, there's a lot of moving parts. Do we, are we trying to nail it down today? When I look at it, I, I want to broaden donors, but I want to restrict or list with specificity what the needs are. And then common good, define it. That's how I would move this forward to turn it to, to missionize it. So how, so what do you think of when you say donors we want to engage the corporate community. We want to engage individual donors um, in a variety of ways, but we don't have to put the, what those ways are. I think that's too specific. Um, I think we need to identify those which we're helping in the second piece of it. So if, if it's, we're talking about um, Royal Oak Civic Organizations, if we're talking about um, if we're going to be as narrow as the groups that we've identified from the, the Royal Oak City Commission, or if we need to find a, a few uh, summarizing words that summarize those types of groups. And then what getting rid of common good and changing it into uh, uh, something more specific. And I, and I don't have an example on the top of my head for that one yet. I'm still thinking that one through. That's so interpretable.
So it seems to me that we want to keep, what I like about this statement is that we, we want to keep it a very high level in my mind, the mission. And without overcomplicating it, we would have something that's more specific, whether, and maybe it's kind of like a strategic plan um, that says, how are we going to do this in the next one to three years? And that's a little bit more specific. And, and that's where we could narrow our focus and target certain donor, donors, um, list certain entities within the city that we want to help. Um, I, I think we can get more specific in a strategic plan type statement than, than we should in a mission statement. The mission statement should be almost, I don't say everlasting, but it, it shouldn't change. It should be very broad. It should give us the flexibility to um, pivot if we need to, need to a little bit. I agree. So let's start to kind of dissect the sentence and see if there's anything where, where we want to make changes in it then. Um, I, would, I would support the Royal Oak Civic Foundation provides uh, rewarding ways for corporate and community donors so that people who read it realize it's about them to support a thriving, I take out resilient community, resilient but the community where, um, and we need to define what the needs are a little bit more. So are we, we are supporting currently Royal Oak, uh, what are the types of organizations? They're not, are there, are they departments? And I don't wanna say that type of word, but what are the functions of, of the organizations within Royal Oak that we're, we're supporting? Animal shelter, library, senior services. These are what types of organizations? or functions. Civic. Because it's in our title, we need another word for it though. Yeah, I know. We, we've been calling them city entities for a while. And I think at one point, Char, you had legacy groups on one of your documents. So I don't know that we've come to a conclusion about what they're called. Are they community enhancement programs? Well, that could be anything. So I'm sorry, Tom, what did you say? Corporate? And community donors. So when you read this mission statement, you community. identify I am okay. one of those two elements. Okay. To support a thriving community. To support a thriving community, yep. Where, and then what I'm struggling with here is what the things that we're supporting, what do they essentially do? I mean, an animal shelter is providing um, a community need for um, matching stray animals with individual donors and individual owners. Um, it's not essential unless, of course, you've owned a dog or a cat and you realize it's absolutely essential. Um, but you know, are these are these city services? Are they? Um, I I feel like they are community enhancement programs. As a senior, being able to go to a senior center and, and get programming um, about topics that are relevant, that's community enhancement to me. Um, and I'm okay with it being broad as long as it's, I don't know, that's, I'm not sure how we, we, how we talk about the needs that we're addressing. Because we can't do it all. We're not handling, uh, we handled food service, uh, food insecurity, inadvertently with that most recent activity. So in that case, we're becoming a catch-all. I don't know, I don't, I, don't have a, I don't have a strong direction on how we can call these things what they are so it's clear to anyone who reads it. What if we took it out in support of a thriving community with resources distributed for something? Our job is to provide resources.
So the Railroad Civic Foundation provides rewarding ways for corporate community, community donors to support Tom, I got. I want to push back on the leading with providing ways for donors to support. I mean, I I think our our mission is to um, provide a thriving, resilient community where needs are addressed, um, and then by um, uh, pro, you know providing rewarding ways for donors. I mean, I, I I'm not. In, I don't want to lead with. Um, the first thing we want is to put our hand out. So you just want to switch the order. And I'm, I, I'm not wedded to the order of it. I, I'm glad to support that. So I've, I've got health, culture, safety, well-being as kind of broad categories of need. Because the animal shelter technically is part of the police department. So that's a safety function. I mean, it really exists to, um, you know, collect strays and deal with animals in that way. It's not a, it's, it's, its purpose is not a rescue mission. Okay. So that, I think that comfortably falls under the category of safety. I deliberately didn't say education because I don't know that that's where we're going, but knowledge I'm thinking library-ish stuff here, although library could be culture also. Yeah. So again, do we want to get so specific with the mission statement? Because sometimes this is going to be, you know, on some of our paper assets on, on our website. And I, I think, you know, the short general gist of what we're doing is, is where, how the mission statement should sit. My personal opinion, I, I said this earlier, I, I think it needs to be short. I, need to, I think it needs to be broad, um, not specific. I think there's other opportunities, whether it be a strategic plan or values, you know, a value statement or something like that, um, or a vision statement, that's where you have an opportunity to be more specific. How about if we all take um, a homework assignment and we craft the mission statement and bring it to our next meeting that we all envision? Okay. And we'll trade and see if we can uh, um, pull parts from each of ours or maybe one of us happens to nail it. Okay. Yeah, okay. Let's, let's take this offline. Let's look back to my minutes here. And and then we do, do we plan to do that at the next meeting? Sure. Does, do, do we love, I mean, I, I have to, I keep going back to what, I mean, this is my first, I really like what Julie wrote. Um, do we, is that a good foundation? Are we saying we just want to tweak that or do we want to com start completely fresh? I will take that and use it as my template and, and just words with it. Okay, so maybe send that out to everybody then that, maybe that whole section there um, about core values and. Okay. Or maybe it's that whole page, that whole document, I guess it, it's, it's worth it's it's worthy of uh, of utilizing. So here's one Royal Oak Civic. Uh, oh, got that wrong. Royal Oak Civic Foundation uh, works in partnership with donors to create a more robust community. You know that was a play off of some of the words from this original. But again, it has the donors first, um, except we're using that word partnership. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I like that one too. I like that one. We're neat or and innovative programs are encouraged. See, I, I think it has to look, we really can't be about supplanting the normal city operations. It's going to be very difficult to raise money for that. But an innovative 
program or something that supplements, not supplants, I think people will donate to. Okay, I can, I'm just going to leave the, what we started here, Tom's uh, version yeah. and then Shar. Shar, I didn't get very far on yours. I tried to change the uh, resources distributed for common good up front. Um, but I think I'll just stop here because we may, you may not use that at all. Actually, but, I'm going to use that last one. I like that. I like that one. Um, this one? The, the bottom one. The, I'm just going to play with that one. Like Railroad ROCF provides resources for innovative programs and take it from there. Okay. Okay, then um, would any of you like to see this updated? document or just use the original document that was in your meeting packet? I, I, I'm fine if you just send that right there with like it's just some of the brainstorming from Tom and Char and okay. All right, so I'll I will save this and then I'll send it to you after the meeting. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, moving on on our agenda then. Uh, 13, discuss endowment and management options, CFSEM, Shar. Yeah, I don't know that there's uh, much to say. The document that the Community Foundation sent me that I forwarded to you um, describes their ca ca capacity to manage endowments for a wide variety of organizations ranging from the Detroit Symphony on down to you know uh, couples, individuals. Um, their basic MO is that um, money that comes into the, the um, trust fund that uh, we would establish or that anyone establishes is held by the foundation um, in perpetuity and they then pay out uh, four to five percent of the annual assets to the trust to use for its stated purposes. Um, so if we did have um, people who wanted to make an endowment type gift as opposed to some sort of operating gift, um, we could pretty quickly pivot to set up an endowment um, that would exist for that purpose. I, I like it as an option. Um, I, I, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, instead of us, you know, trying to create, you know, manage our <coughs> funds, manage an endowment um, with all of the risk that that entails. Um, I mean, this is a, a, an esteemed community, you know, regional um, resource for us um, that I would trust completely. What, one of the things, what I like about that is one of the areas that we need to be mindful of as far as fundraising is that, and this is a much longer term approach, um, is when we talk to folks, um, asking them to keep us in mind with their own, you know, their estate planning and yeah. their wills. Um, and that's something where you, you don't see the money for, for maybe years. Um, but if you start now, uh, as the years go by, that's where your large dollar amounts start to come into the organization. Right. Um, so I like that idea a lot. And th there are people who may not uh, donate much now, but they might keep us in mind in their estate or will, and that is just fine when you look at the long-term impact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, Shar, I, I'm sorry. I think I included that document from the CFSEM last month, yes. but I didn't remember it to put in this month. Do you happen to recall on the document if they mentioned what kind of expenses there would be for us to hold the money? I mean, um, did they say a, a percentage of our total and we needed a, at least $2 million to get started or something like that? There is, I think the minimum is like $10,000. Um, and I don't, some of their funds have a $250 minimum or a percentage management fee. I think it may be like 1%. Okay. I don't know. I, uh, it's been again, like three months since I looked at it. Okay. 
Okay, so is there a next step that you would like me to move on? No, I think I just submitted it to make sure that was kind of in our minds as a possibility. If something falls into our lap, I mean, if we do a big announcement and somebody says, you know, I want to leave you my estate and we need to pivot quickly, that's a place to pivot to. Yeah, we're ready for it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we'll just use that as an FYI and not something we need to act on at this point, correct? Right. All right. Anything else on the topic? That'll leave us the next 30 minutes to discuss topic number 14, discuss kickoff event at Rob and Robertson Brothers donation. Char, go ahead. So I just feel like um, it's, you know, I've said this before, sometimes you got a ready, fire, aim. We've got a logo, we've got an initial donation, um, we've got our, our donation letter. We've supported an event already, the, the Gleaners event. Um, um, we want people to be aware of us, even if we don't have all of our specific work plans in place. Um, there's a news hole here, you know, slow, every day is a slow news day in the COVID era. Um, I think that we could get some good coverage of it. Um, and I would be willing to, to, Han show that to write the news release to put together the pre R plan working in coordination with Judy um, to make that happen fairly soon. If we are agreed. So in your mind's eye, what would you see as a kickoff event? What, what are some options that you uh, you've thought through? Well, I, I don't know that, you know, these days it's not going to be an event. It's going to be a digital event. I mean, it would be a news release, um, um, a media opportunity for reporters to interview the, the board chair, Tom, you and or Julie, um, and, uh, you know, a graphics package with a photo from the Gleaners event and a copy of the logo um, and uh, maybe a photo of a, I mean, we've already got the, the Robertson brothers check, but you know, a, some sort of, you know, staged grip and grin photo with them. Um, that could be a pretty nice media package. Just a question to you, um, well, to you, Char. Do you think that uh, in this virtual environment, especially if it has to be virtual, something like a, almost like a, a planned Q&A session or plan, I mean, like, you know, uh, I almost want to say like a um, facilitated panel kind of thing um, would make sense and then invite community input or something like that. I'm just thinking of a ways to, if anyone showed up to engage. You know, the, the places where this is, is of interest are small. I mean, it's really basically it's the daily tribune is the Royal Oak review even publishing anymore. I don't, I don't think so. I, didn't kind I don't of think so. No. no. Um, I haven't been getting them. So it's, Mark, that just cracks me up whenever they yeah. <laughs> um, So it's the Daily Tribune and, and social media. I mean, I don't even, I'd be surprised if the news or free press would be in, interested in this. You know, they might be Oakland Press. If you're in the Daily Tribune, you're in the Oakland Press. So that's covered. Um, so I don't know what our, I mean, how much you know, regional play we would get out of it. But, um, you know, social media and the Daily Tribune would be probably our best bets. And I don't know that we need a, a Q&A or anything on that. I, you know, a couple of reporters would be happy to interview Tom and or Julie at length on the subject. Or am I thinking too small? Oh, I was just trying to think of like if we actually did an event event like that the the, the biggest thing I think could think of was a struck a facilitated Q and A. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't know. I was just throwing stuff out there. Yeah. I feel I don't I feel like there should be something that's bigger that we can tag into that we either create that's helpful during this time and or using part of our first donation that makes it newsworthy. Um, so you know, we have 16,000 that was just brought to us and, and then that makes it the natural tie-in for the donor to be featured to thank them publicly for it. Um, you know, I wonder if there's a, if there's a, uh, <clears throat> some programming that we can 
promote and pay for through one of the, the civic organizations we support that help parents with things to keep their kids occupied during the, uh, or, or the first things to when you're, when social distancing has been relaxed slightly and the governor's order is done that we can provide as a, here's the next thing to do uh, in a socially distant way to, you know, to get your family out of the house. And we're doing it for Royal Oak residents. And here's a, a something that we're paying for. Um, that, that's where my mind kind of goes with this um, as, as latching onto something that's larger and being relevant to it. So here's my thought. <clears throat> um, I, I like the idea of doing something now or soon and striking when there is, it is slower news and the news is negative. And so they're looking for positive news stories. I, I think there's an opportunity for us. The, the headwinds are that the Oakland press, all of the local papers, they've laid all the reporters off. They're just, I don't know how much coverage you're gonna get locally. The only coverage we could get would be the free press and news. So in order to get them to cover it, it's gonna have to be big. So we have to, if we do something, we have to go big and we have to do something that the larger, like the TV media and the larger newspapers capture. In order to do that, I, I agree with Tom, we have to come up with the fact, because the question is gonna be, <clears throat> great, you've received this money from, um, from um, the Robertson brothers, what are you gonna do with it? And, and so we, we have to be able to answer that question, right? We have to, we're still kind of um, birthing ourselves. Um, we're still working on the, the mission statement. So we're, we're a little vulnerable there. Uh, but I think if we had a use, if we could give that money or part of that money that solves a problem, for the Royal Oak community. And I think we have to try to tie it to the city somehow, right? Maybe the city can give us some ideas of where they see some voids. That could be a large enough news story. The other thing I was thinking about is I think we're going to have this disruption to some extent for some time. Do we, if we don't do something now, do we, I don't want to get overshadowed, but do we, is there a way to ride on the city's coattails for the new city hall and that announcement? Um, we could get overshadowed there, but it would be interesting if we could somehow tie ourselves into it because that will get someone that will get visibility. There's just some thoughts. You know, one of the items on this agenda is, in fact, the next item on the agenda is, you know, catalog <laughs> current fundraising happenings in Royal Oak. Maybe this isn't quite that big a leap, but I mean, maybe we just need to talk to um, our senior services director, our parks and rec people, our librarian. I mean, those off the top of my head are agencies that are doing things to meet needs, you know, the quarantine needs. Um, they might have some ideas. You know, so here, here's, it just popped in my mind. I, I don't know whether this even is possible or the need exists, but it's almost like, you know, we're delivering meals to seniors or to those um, at home and they need, they need this vehicle. And we partner with the local um, car dealership and we buy this vehicle for this agency and now they can deliver meals. That is newsworthy. <laughs> that you could get somebody to cover. You know, there's um, uh, a few auto companies who are doing um, free uh, special cleaning of cars uh, to help with the cold COVID issue as well. So there's a lot of groups that are, are doing uh, COVID charity type work. I wonder if we could engage one of those to help with. Um, and I'm trying to think of, there's, there's a couple dealerships, I'm trying to remember if one in Royal Oak was doing it, um, and they were doing it for first responders. So there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, options and ideas that groups are coming forward to help with police, fire, um, nursing positions as well to, to ease their, their burden right now 
I wonder if there'd be something that we could do on a, on a big scale, pay for that would help all residents in a um, in a socially distant way that would 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 be relevant too. Yeah. It, the thing is, I just I'm not sure where there's a, there's needs out there. I, we we just need to know what they are. Um, is there somebody at the city that could give us some insight or um, you really can't go to the, I mean, you could go to the county, but we need to keep it tied to the city. Is there, is there, I mean, does the city have its own like meals on wheels program or um, I don't know if they're, this might, I mean, the churches or anything that we would be able to help or um, but, well, the, the two people who know exactly what's going on are Judy Davids and Carol Schwanger. I don't know if Carol's still listening in here, but they've been, you know, the city has invited people in need to call the city manager's office. And Carol and Judy have been honchoing that. Um, and if anybody has their fingers on the pulse of what the community needs are, that it would be them. So... Um, I mean, I'd be willing to be a committee of one or Julie and I as a committee of two to research this and bring something back to the next meeting. I, I like that idea. I, I think there's, there's an opportunity here to Shar's point um, to, and I, to help and to use that money. And that is, that's the story, right? So that's, you know, you know so tell me more about this foundation, right? Uh, love to. Was so you, could, at, you could even have Robertson brothers being interviewed um, about their donation, which, you know, that, that creates some competition as well. I mean, there are other people that are builders, developers that will be watching. Um, so I, I think there is an opportunity here. It's, we, we just, I think we need to, to Tom's point, give some of that Robertson money away to, to help something related to the COVID pandemic, the times that we are in right now. Okay, good idea. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of the tag in. Oh, go ahead, Alex. I was just gonna say, like to dovetail a little bit of that, we need a way for people to make like online donations um, readily available. Yeah, so if we're funding something that they can contribute to. And, and Pete, I like your idea about almost like it's a subtle challenge to the corporate community that has their businesses and they've been open as well to, and we'll invite them to also participate financially in whatever we're doing, starting with the catalyst money from Robertson Brothers. So maybe it's, yeah, I like this. So like a GoFundMe kind of thing. So maybe it's, and I'm making this up, but let's say there was a vehicle that needed to be done. Um, Robertson Brothers just put, at, you know, through their donation to the foundation, put this much money towards that vehicle. XYZ dealership in Royal Oak um, is going to put this much money by, you know, by, you know, by donating part of the car or whatever that is. Um, we need X amount more. Um, please help, you know, please help us and help us solve this issue that, um, w that is negatively this, this, th please help us provide a solution to this problem that is negatively impacting uh, impacting Royal Oak, Royal Oak residents or whatever that is. That would create a lot of awareness. The event that we just did, it was Leaners and who was the group that, that helped bring it to Royal Oak? Which um, union, one of the unions I think, wasn't it? Yeah, the Royal Oak Firefighters Union. Okay. You know, food insecurity is really hot right now and knowing yes. that there's a lot of produce that's being disposed of because, um, uh, uh, what is it, manufacturing chains, things like that. And <clears throat> yeah, we've been personally here working with a lot of the retailers at, at uh, the farmer's market in Detroit. Um, they have access to a lot of the, this produce. I wonder if we consider another food insecurity in a bigger in a bigger way, knowing that we have this this money to be able to Help support, um, help support those farmers. Although supporting local restaurants, 
that's also huge right now too. If we can help with something that would be help our restaurants be more socially distant so that they're you know, back in business. We got lots of options to consider and think through. I'd, I'd be curious what the folks who know the, the larger community needs, um, Judy and, and Carol might've heard if, if that dovetails into any of this. I like the idea of, of Char and Julie, you know, reaching out to the city to see if they have some thoughts that they see where there could be a need. Um, and I, I think we use some or all of this $16,000 or, you know, we use 10,000, whatever that is, as seed money that brings awareness to this foundation. And, and so maybe we need 30,000 and we've already raised 10, um, uh, you know, and we, you know, help us kind of thing. I was just going to say, what if we used it as matching, but right. we already raised it. <laughs> But yeah. still, I mean, well, you could use it. What do you, I mean, that's how you look at it. Specifically <laughs> for this initiative, that would feel that would be right. Matching makes sense. We should definitely position it that way. That they will provide match dollars, even though we already have it. Well, we're we have no obligation to spend it all. Mm -hmm. No, we will agree to set aside X percent of that um as as match up to matching up to a certain total in uh contributions oh you know i don't know what this doesn't really this doesn't fall in the probably in the city's um purview per se but i know there's so food and security is big the other thing that it's real and it it gains it's, it has a lot of attention is the lack of technology for students in classes, K-12, college, everyone, um, internet connection, computers. You know, I just had kind of a slap my head for a moment here. Um, Blessings in a Backpack has played a pivotal plays and is even playing a greater role in um, solving food security for children. Royal Oak Youth Assistance, because they are in touch with many um, families in need, um, have been very active in giving um, like micro grants to families where they need $100 to cover the rent or to pay the gas bill or so forth. Those are two really strong, very boots on the ground in touch with local needs organizations. Yeah, I, you could reach out to them. I mean, they, they have, they have, they know where the needs are. Right. And they can connect us. Yeah, and the Schools Foundation, this is the same way. Schools Foundation has has had janitors delivering um, Chromebooks to students. So maybe it might be the Schools Foundation as well. Yeah. So do we, okay, so in a partnership between the city Civic Foundation and the Schools Foundation, they partner together, Could working be. together. I mean, I'm on the board of Royal Oak Youth Assistment Assistance. The blessings in a backpack people are old friends of mine and the school's foundation is the school's foundation. We could answer those questions like in, in you know, five minutes. Yeah, I, I, that's, I think I love the direction. Yeah, I think putting together a list, Char, with um, people you know in these groups with their needs and reaching out to Judy could be super helpful for you know, dialing this down to pick um, a task to move forward on. On a connected piece of this too, I'd be curious if we have anyone <clears throat> with a strong social media following that is connected to Royal Oak, whether they're a celebrity that grew up in Royal Oak or um, something else. So we can try and, try and tag that in as well to help get as much um, additional social media on this as well. Egan Michael Key. Or I know Mark Ridley's on our um, recruitment list. So I'm sure he has some connections. Yeah, that might be nice. Have, uh, either of those would be great. Mark could reach out to you know, four or five comedians to, so where they got their start in Royal Oak at his comedy castle and asking them to help promote and maybe even make a gift as well, too. So Ben Alex. Affleck lived here for like a summer, you know? <laughs> Around Alex, the corner. Who was the second person you said? Mark Ridley and... Uh, Keegan Michael Key, the comedian, well, actor. I don't want to pigeonhole himself. He grew up um, in Royal Oak. Yeah. Okay. 
he did some stuff for the United Way for Southeastern Michigan, a uh, series of videos uh, promoting things like two on one and some other resources. Cool. I didn't know that. That's awesome. And how do you spell his last name? I'm not familiar with him. Um, let me Google that. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> I don't want to say it wrong. Yeah, it's it's just K-E-Y. Um, so it's Keegan hyphen Michael, last name Key, K-E-Y. Okay. Julie, go out to the inner go out to you know the internet to YouTube and do a search on key and peel for some uh, of yeah. his his uh comedy partner was I don't know his first name, last name Peel. Okay. All right, anything else on this topic? We, it sounds like we've got our next direction um, with Shar and Julie reaching out <clears throat> a few different ways to bring back some concepts for us to review at, at next month's meeting. My the minutes will be very short on this subject, but I've, I've kept kind of a side note or list of ideas. Um, but other than that, I'm this will just be a very brief item in the minutes, if that's okay. Sounds good. All right, let's move on to agenda item 15. Uh, catalog current fundraising happening in Royal Oak. <clears throat> Are we aware of, I'm sure most fundraising because it was event oriented has been kind of pulled offline for most of the uh, organizations in Royal Oak. Is there a central repository? Does Judy have this of all of the, the regular happenings? She would more than anyone She's the chair of the um, the organization of community groups. Um, so yeah, she would know as well as anyone between her and the Chamber of Commerce uh, okay. that would probably cover it. All right. <clears throat> In a, before all this hit, I think it would have been helpful to have kind of a schedule that we can pull and know when things are happening. Um, uh, I'm sure most of this has changed. Do we know much about the larger community events and what's, what their plans are? Uh, arts beats and eats etc are they yes yes i know exactly because it was just on the commission agenda on monday and they're they're planning to move forward with their their typical event just in a different presented in a different way so okay doing this from mem memory uh, um you know what just go to the commission agenda um there are three or four events that have been, that they're postponing until like August and September. There are three more that are going to be operate as virtual events. Two of those are fun runs. Um, Dream Cruise, the city is trying, is working with other uh, South Oakland communities uh, to probably cancel all uh, licensed events connected with the Dream Cruise, although it's kind of hard to keep people from driving on Woodward, which of course is how it got started. Um, John Witz is still exploring possibilities to um, deliver arts, beats, and eats, obviously keeping an eye on, you know, state requirements and governor's orders and so forth, but so far arts, beats, and eats has not been canceled. So these are all events that we're talking about. Are, do we want to catalog events or do we want to catalog fundraisers or both? Because they may have a tie-in. I think both. So if we can start to keep an annual list of events in Royal Oak, and if it's, it, I, I would have to think it's being published someplace else. Um, but the original intent of this was that there was a lot of uh, under the radar screen fundraising happening between groups and, um, and trying to make sure that we were either coordinating or it was we were cataloging all of those so that we weren't going to the same donors or weren't uh, activating any fundraising campaigns uh, when someone else was doing something as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think the animal shelter had um, a fundraising event scheduled for April that was canceled. Shar, do you know anything more about that? It's canceled. Have they... Um, set a potential new date for later in the year? No, because they, like every other city committee, are not meeting. Okay. Um, the, the necessity that uh, all committee meetings be public means that staff have to set up a Zoom meeting for all of them, and that is um, a, quite an onerous process. Right. Um, so we're probably pushing our luck here um, as a committee meeting in this way. 
Mm -hmm. Do we yeah, need to and, change our, and, our processes to be more sensitive to that? Should we abbreviate our meetings to uh, every other month or something more helpful to them? I was going to suggest that, but if we can, I mean, if, if, if what we do, that's why I'm kind of pushing for a public announcement because then we might well be able to bring in money that helps the city or helps organizations. So that was, that's kind of why I wanted us to definitely meet this week or this month. Okay. Yeah, and actually this is a, a good segue to the fact that um, our um, staff for the WROK asked us to be finished by five o'clock today because of the um, filming that he's doing this live stream and um, he needs to prepare the same equipment for the budget meeting. All right, so out of respect for that, there are seven minutes left in today's meeting. Why don't we uh, conclude our conversation around 15 and keep it uh, and let's move that down to the parking lot. Um, and then why don't we set our agenda for our next meeting? So move catalog current fundraising to parking lot rather than unfinished business? Correct. Okay. Do we, sorry, I, do we need our own Zoom account? I don't know how that affects OMA. Um, I made that suggestion after Pete made the offer to us. And um, again, being remote, it's hard to have a full conversation with the people who need to be in the room to figure out you know, if, if having our own Zoom account would make things easier, we would have to still uh, pay attention to OMA, but whether or not we need to have this live streamed or recorded, you know, it's not clear to me because it's not in the executive order, um, but I think it's a, a staff decision, you know, to ha have this recorded, but that I don't know, Alex. It, it would be nice to to understand it a little bit more clearly. Mark, do you know? Sorry, I know we were moving on the agenda and stuff, but I'm just wondering if it related to this in the last conversation, whether it frees us up to be able to get work done. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's hard to understand you. Oh, yeah, no problem. Um, the Is there an issue with us using a private uh, Zoom account? No, um, we discussed that issue. Uh, it's, it's just that the city policy uh wants to the city policy is to broadcast the meetings on the as their live stream and uh this doesn't necessarily appear to be a problem i've read through the governor's executive orders including the latest one doesn't say anything about uh, uh using private accounts uh it does require though that the meeting can be recorded i know you can do that on zoom mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I think that's the policy of the city to have the meetings recorded and then this, uh, available for, for downloading or for viewing. I know that that process to convert the video takes an extraordinary amount of computer processing, uh, sometimes days if you have a seven hour meeting. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, that, so I don't think it's a problem to have a, a private meeting. I think it's more, uh, I did talk to David about it. It's more uh, stress on uh, available staff and resources right now. I know that Google Meeting is free, but I haven't explored the idea and I don't, I don't want to bring it up with uh, Richard or uh, David because I think they're probably have things figured out the way they need to right now. Yeah, as is Microsoft Teams. I don't know if you can record in um, Google Meeting, though, with their recent upgrade. I was just asking because we could always, um, I mean, if it was Zoom or something else, uh, obviously just record it in the, in the cloud and then share the, the recording link um, for staff to manage on their own time, like when they have time. I recognize that's, that's if it. that was part of the issue um, as far as scheduling goes, but if it's staff time converting it for um, live stream, that's another issue. Well, that's interesting yeah. because the city uh, staff has, uh, we've gone uh, to the cloud and we do have Microsoft team available, although I've never looked at it. I'll take a look at it. Yeah. All right, we have three minutes left in today's meeting. Um, 
any comments about our next agenda? Uh, number nine on our current agenda, review OCC students ROCF branding edits. Should we move that up to director's report and what uh, what the uh, next stage for, for usage, usage is or should it stay there as number nine? I'm inclined to, to move that into uh, staff responsibilities. All right, so we'll make that a sub of number seven. Um, discuss recruiting additional trustees, quick conversation. How about putting that down in the parking lot? Yes, please. And then we'll leave our new business agenda. 11 is something we're gonna come back with a report. Uh, 12, we've all come back with homework on it. Uh, 13, let's put that in the parking lot. So we, we do keep that as a regular, we're just aware of it. Agreed or take it off entirely? Oh, you can take that off. Okay. So let's take off 13, move 14 up. And we move 15 to the parking lot. Sounds good. Sound good? Yep. All right. Anything else or a have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All right, I'll go through roll call for all in favor. Uh, Shar? Aye. Alex? Aye. Pete? Aye. And I'll say aye as well. Thank you all for your time today, and we will see you. Our next meeting is. Hang on. June 10th. Thank you. <laughs> Mid June. June 10th. Okay, thank you all. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.